shooting portraits wide open versus stopping down, which is better? The answer to this question can revolutionize your portrait photography. What's up everyone, welcome to Breakdown. My name is Miguel Quiles. If it's your first time here, I create videos where I help people improve their photography through tutorials, through gear reviews, and more. If you're into free education, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be kept up to date and notified when one of my new videos post up. Today, we're going to revisit the topic of shooting portraits with a wide open aperture versus stopping down. This all came because recently I posted up an image on social media and I was asked why I had taken the image at F13. The funny thing, I guess, about this question is that I get it all the time. Anytime I take an image with a lens that opens up to f1.4, but I instead shoot at f8 and beyond, people almost always ask why I chose to do that. When I first started shooting portraits, I'm gonna be really honest with you all, I was pretty confused by this too. I mean, why would you buy a lens like an 85 1.4 that costs me around 1,800 US dollars and then turn around and take photos at some smaller aperture that can easily be achieved with a more affordable lens. Have you heard this sentiment before? All right, there's a lot to unpack for you to understand the hows and the whys of all of this, and it really all boils down to understanding the relationship between aperture and depth of field. First, let's take a look at aperture. You probably already know that the aperture is the size of the opening in the diaphragm of the lens. Looking at the aperture ring on this lens, for example, you'll notice it has an aperture range of f1.4 at the widest, all the way to f16 at its smallest. At f1.4, the lens will let in the most amount of light onto your camera's sensor. As we narrow down our aperture, you'll notice that the iris gets smaller and smaller until we get to f16, which lets in the least amount of light. Now we're probably all familiar with what a typical portrait looks like when photographed wide open. If you're photographing somebody, you'll get them in focus and the background will blur away based on the aperture that you've chosen. Aperture is pretty simple and it's pretty easy to understand, but the key to all of this as it pertains to your portrait photography is this, this marriage, this, this holy alliance between aperture and depth of field. So Miguel, what is depth of field? According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, which, hold on, I'm gonna put my glasses on for this one because I wanna make sure that I look and I sound super brainy. Now, if you don't have a cup of coffee, now might be a good time because we're about to get like super, super in depth. I wanna make sure you guys stay awake, but let's do this. Depth of field is the range of distances of the object in front of an image forming device such as a camera lens, measured along the axis of the device throughout which the image has acceptable sharpness. A more simple definition, we're gonna take this thing off, <laughs> for depth of field is that it's the distance between the nearest and the farthest objects that are in acceptable focus. Looking back at our lens and keeping things simple, if we shoot wide open, we'll have little depth of field, meaning less of the image will be perceived to be in focus. If we shoot at a narrow aperture, more of the image will be perceived to be in focus. Depth of field is impacted by three things. The aperture that you choose, the focal length of whatever lens it is that you're using, and the subject focusing distance. Let's take a look first at how your choice of aperture impacts your depth of field with a little demonstration. I'm here with Juliana. Make sure you check out her work, by the way, on Instagram. I'm gonna link her information in the description for this video. We're going to take three photos of her at various apertures to see exactly what happens. I'll be using an 85 millimeter lens on a full frame A7R3. Juliana, my portrait subject, will be about four feet away, and I'll be taking the first set of images wide open at f1.4. So with those values fixed, you're looking at a depth of field of 0.64 inches with your near focus being 47.68 inches and far focus 48.32 inches. If we take that same lens and we narrow it down to f5.6 with our subject distance staying at four feet away, your depth of field goes up to 2.56 inches, your near focus is gonna be 46.75 inches 
and far focus at 49.31 inches. That's an increased depth of field of 1.92 inches over shooting wide open at f1.4, which means that more of the image should appear to be in focus. Now let's get a little crazier here. What do you think is gonna happen if we take our aperture up to f11 from four feet away? Now our depth of field goes up to 5.13 inches with the near focus being 45.57 inches and far focus at 50.7 inches. That's 4.49 inches more depth of field than shooting at f1.4. While it might not seem like much of a difference, you'll see exactly how all of this translates when we take a look at the resulting images. The exciting thing about depth of field is that it's somewhat easy to predict how exactly it's gonna work. The numbers I just shared with you weren't something that I just randomly came up with. I got them using a depth of field calculator. You can input these values, the three values we talked about earlier, to give you your exact depth of field. Now there's a variety of different depth of field calculator apps that are available for Android and iOS, and I'd recommend downloading whichever one it is that you like, just so that you can refer back to this at any time. Now, if you hate math and technical mumbo jumbo and you fell asleep out there, wake up because this is the important part. Chewy, wake up, this is the important part. We're my here. Bad. My, my bad. <sighs> All right, let's carry on. So as it pertains to a portrait, depth of field is going to dictate how much of the image looks sharp and in focus. This area of focus can be selected in camera, but generally speaking, we want to make sure that the subject's eye and a little bit more specifically that their iris is our focus point. We've tried taking some images with the 85 millimeter 1.4 lens, but let's mix things up here and let's see what happens to our depth of field if we take a similarly cropped image using a 70 to 200 mil lens and we'll set it to 150 millimeters. In order to get a similar composition to the images that we took with the 85 millimeter lens, I'll have to back up from the four feet that we were at to 5.7 feet. This is an f2.8 lens, so that will be our new wide open aperture, and we'll keep our stop down aperture at f11. All right, let's head over to the computer and let's check these out. So let's take a look at the photos in Capture One and let's zoom in and let's really kind of hone in on the details and see exactly what the differences are with these different settings. So first we're gonna take a look at the shot that was done with the 85 mil lens at f1.4 and we're gonna zoom into this photo. So you'll notice that our point of focus was the eye in this shot. We used eye autofocus and it did lock in and even at f1.4 we were able to get both eyes in focus because they were on the same focal plane, which means that both eyes were parallel to one another. I'm gonna show you guys some other images here momentarily where they're on a different focal plane, meaning that one eye was closer to the camera lens than the other. You'll see what happens at f1.4. It's, you know, it's bound to happen. But you're gonna notice that at f1.4, the eyes are really sharp and in focus. But if you look at the bridge of the nose, you're gonna notice that you're not seeing the same type of texture as what you would see underneath the eye, which is where that focal plane is. And if you look on the very side of the eye, you're gonna see that some of the hairs that are there start to fall out of focus. The side of her face is falling out of focus. And then of course, if we look at her hair, you're gonna notice that for the most part, most of her hair is going to be blurry. So. This is the common thing that we see often in portrait photography. People are shooting at f1.4, and this is the level of texture that you're able to get due to the depth of field being so narrow. Now, we're going to go and look at the shots at f5.6, and we're gonna take a look and see how those images look a little bit different. So even, doesn't seem like a big jump, or maybe it does seem like a huge jump, going from 1.4 to 5.6, but check this out. This is actually pretty interesting. So you're gonna notice that this shot that was taken at f5.6, you see a lot more detail. Even that same eyeball, which was the same uh, point of focus that we had with that f1.4 shot, it still looks really sharp, really detailed. The eyelashes are sharp, the eyebrows look sharp, uh, her skin looks sharp. We're starting to see that texture on the bridge of the nose, that looks sharp. Um, both eyes actually look very sharp. 
We see all of the detail. And as we move towards the side of the face, you're gonna notice that more of the hair is in focus. But if we look on the far edge of the hair, you're gonna notice that it falls out of focus. So at f5.6, we're still getting that blur, but it's falling the far distance for the focus is a little bit farther back. So we see more of the hair in focus. Now, what I want you to notice as well, if we do these side by side, look at the background. So we obviously know that at f1.4, the background is gonna get much blurrier than what you would see at f5.6, but it's still blurry at f5.6, right? So if we zoom into the background, you could see that the background, even at f5.6, versus what we're seeing at f1.4, it's still blurry. We're still getting that out of focus look. So if you're outdoors, granted we're doing this in the studio with a textured background, but if you were outside, you're still gonna get a blurry background at, at f5.6. Now let's take a look at the shot that was taken at f11. Now this is where things get kind of crazy, right? Because usually we're not taking portraits at f11, we're shooting them wide open, but let's take a look and see what happens here. So at f11, you're gonna notice that a majority of the face is going to be in focus. It is going to appear uh, detailed. So you're gonna see the texture in the eyes and the skin, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and those points of the face that were out of focus at f5.6 or at f1.4, you're gonna notice now, if you look at her hair, her hair is really sharp. You know, it's, it's, it's very, um, very focused. And I'll show you here on another image. So um, you're gonna see that the hair is actually in focus. And then this other crazy thing happens where when you're shooting a portrait at F11, we were talking about the eyes being on the same focal plane. That first shot at F1.4 worked great because her eyes and her, her nose was pointing at the camera. So both eyes are parallel to one another, both are in focus. I could choose any eyeball and it's gonna be the same. But when the head uh, turns this way, the camera's gonna pick the closest eye. This eye at f1.4 is gonna get blurred away. Check this out. This is at f11, same situation is happening. You'll notice that her nose is pointing away from the camera's lens. That front eye is the one that it picked for focus. So that one is really sharp and in focus. But check out the back eye. Even the back eye at F11 shows up sharp and in focus. So this is something where if you're taking a portrait and you're gonna have a model or a subject that's turning their face and moving around, if you don't wanna risk losing that depth of field and losing that sharpness, you may wanna consider shooting at something like F11 or even F13, F16, whatever aperture it is that you need to get so that you get that wider depth of field. Now let's take a look at the shots that we took with the 70 to 200 uh, that we shot at 150 millimeters. And let's take a look at those, uh, the f2.8 shot versus the f11 shot. So starting off with the f2.8 shot, the camera selected this left eye. And you're gonna notice that with the settings that we had taking this photo, f2.8, um, you're gonna notice that that left eye is really sharp and in focus. We see that texture underneath the eye and the skin. But as we look at the very side of the face, some things are happening here. We notice that some of the hair is actually in focus and some of it is actually blurred away and it's not in focus. So we're getting a little bit of a, a kind of like a different characteristic for our depth of field because we're shooting it at f2.8, but we're also shooting it with a longer lens. So I'm gonna show here on the screen what our uh, depth of field is as far as the depth of field, the far and the near focus at uh, 150 millimeters with the distance that we were at. So you guys can see that here on screen. That's what we were working with, with this particular shot with the settings. So that's where our perceived depth of field is. Now, if I go to the shot that was taken at F11, this is where it gets kind of crazy. So you saw the F11 shot with the 85 mil. This is a 70 to 200 G Master shot with the same F11. We just backed up a little bit because we're at 150 mil. Check this out. We're gonna zoom into this shot here. And I was actually kind of blown away by this. Like this is an insane amount of detail. Um, crazy, crazy detail, very, very sharp eyes. You see every single strand of hair in her eyebrows and her eyelashes on both sides of her face, as you can see. 
Um, all of her skin, you see every little pore, every texture. I'm zoomed in right now at 200%. So you can see everything here on screen. But check this out, when you look at the hair, that's F11 on her hair. <laughs> So F11 at 150 millimeters, we have a really wide depth of field. So every single individual hair on her beautiful curly head, um, you can see every hair, like that is insanity. So let's say for example, if you have the opportunity to do a commercial shoot and you're gonna photograph hair for a client, this is what you wanna do. You wanna have a longer lens, something like a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, photograph them on the longer end, do your calculations, and you're gonna notice that if you're at F11, F13, you're gonna get this really wide depth of field. And looking at the image, you're gonna see the face is in focus, the skin, the hair, her eyes. Honestly, like, <laughs> her eyes, if I zoom into this, tell me if I'm wrong in the comment section, it looks like another universe. It looks like a black hole in the center of this, like, crazy, amazing universe, and you're looking at the raw file. So for those of you who watched the first part of this video and I read your comments, a lot of you were uh, commenting on the fact that the photos didn't look different. F1.8 versus F5.6 look the same to you guys. Um, a lot of you were complaining or commenting about the retouching, about how you know you captured all this texture and then all the texture was taken away with the retouch. The reality is if you see the images on a screen, on my screen, and not through the compression that you're getting through YouTube video or through social media. There is texture in both shots, but there's a lot more texture in the 5.6 than there was at the uh, F1.8. Today, you guys are looking at raw photographs. So keep in mind, I haven't done my, this hasn't seen Photoshop yet. I haven't done the skin retouching and all of that good stuff. You're seeing the raw file, the raw texture that's in this file and so the key is that you're not going to be able to get this type of texture and depth of field unless you shoot it in camera there's no photoshop techniques or anything of the sort to be able to get you this kind of texture if you're not shooting it at the right setting so i have another video on my youtube channel called photographing skin if you haven't had the opportunity to watch that i'm going to link it up in the cards above make sure you watch that video because i'm going to go more in depth on that on that video but anyway, so you guys kind of see here, and I'm gonna show you the difference. We're gonna take this shot here, and I'm gonna take that F11 shot with the 85, just so that you're able to see these side by side. Okay, here we go. So the photograph above, just to take a look and see, So the photograph above is the 85 millimeter shot, and then the photograph below is the uh, 70 to 200 millimeter shot at 150 millimeters. And again, I'm gonna zoom in here to the eyes on the 85, zoom into the eyes here on the 70 to 200. And maybe this doesn't translate as well because you're watching it on the video and it's compressed, but using my eyes and looking at this monitor, I could tell you that the sharpness on the F11 uh, image that was taken with the 70 to 200, if you look at the eyes themselves, they look way sharper. You see a lot more details, a lot more fine details. We're at 100, let's see, let's just go all the way with this, 400%. I'm gonna pick this eye here. We'll go to 400% here. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty wickedly insane. So here's what we're looking at. Um, both shots at F11, but one is at um, 85 mil, one is at 150 mil. And there's quite a bit of difference, even just looking at this here, you know, the eyes are quite a bit sharper. Uh, the skin texture around the eyeball and on the bridge of the nose, you see a lot more detail. It looks more like skin. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy. This is a test actually that I've never done before to compare you know, F11 on two different lenses, two different focal lengths. So try different lenses, try those higher apertures. And again, you might be surprised at what you get.
The bottom line here is that if you want your portraits to have that magazine quality look, you may want to consider taking your portraits at higher f-stops to get that increased depth of field, that perceived focus, that, that sharpness baked right into your RAW files. There's really no way for you to get F11 worth of texture if you're taking your portraits at F1.4 without making it look super ultra retouched or I don't know, unless you're taking a photo of the person farther away. Just do me a favor. If you're the kind of photographer that only shoots portraits wide open, try taking some images at, I don't know, F5.6, at F8, at F11, and maybe you'll fall in love with your portrait photography in a new and exciting way. So. Which do you think works better for portraiture? Let me know in the comment section what you specifically think. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here and I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.